Hey, you guys. Welcome back to Esther's Eden. Um, I am I am so excited about this video. Um, I am usually so excited for the end of the garden to happen because we've worked hard, we planted, like we just go, go, go through the whole growing season that I'm just totally worn out at the end of the year between planting and um, watering and growing and uh, weeding, you know, just all the things. And then, and then of course you have to preserve the harvest. And usually that happens within, you know, a short period of time because our growing season is so short. So by the time winter is coming, I'm usually ready for it. But usually a week or two before Christmas, I'm already like, okay, I'm ready to grow stuff again. And we literally haven't even started actual winter yet. So um, this time of year can be really long and really hard for me, but I have made it easier to get through by saving all of the catalogs, the seed catalogs that come in and my orders and all of those kinds of things, I save them for this time. Like I start right after Christmas usually, I save all my garden planning for this time of year so that I have something, something that that um, is looking at green things that are alive and beautiful and um, not white. <laughs> And I save it for this time of year uh, so that I don't go cabin crazy throughout the next, like, because we have January, February, and March. Usually we can expect snow all the way till Easter. So if that, if Easter falls in April, it might be a long late winter. Um, and I'm not actually sure where it falls this year. I haven't looked, but um, either way, it's just, it's just a long thing. So uh, buckle up. I'm really, really excited to share this video with you guys. I've been planning it for a while and, um, and I want to, I want to help make your garden season as easy as possible for you um, this year to help you sort of demystify some things. If you're new to gardening, kind of give you a, like a jumping point and um and if you're if you've gardened before and now you've moved from a long growing season to a short grow growing season i want to try to help with that as well um <laughs> so i have only ever gardened here in north idaho i've never gardened outside of this place so obviously there are issues in places like the south or long hot growing seasons that have problems that we just don't have here. Uh, it's just it's just completely different. So I'm hoping today's video, no matter where you garden, will help you with seed catalogs and choices and all of that kind of thing. Um, but it's definitely gonna be geared toward more of a shorter growing season uh, growers. But um, anyway, before I get into the seeds and all of the exciting things, I did wanna share something really fun that we did today with you guys. Um, so I'm gonna go ahead and throw in those clips and we'll be right back. Hey guys, where are we gonna go? Um, we are going, going to Durgan. There's a hidden sled in there. And we're finally going in my first time and Eli's second time. First time. I'm so excited. You are? So um, we used to go to this place, not necessarily as kids, but as teenagers. And so I haven't wanted to get the kids out there and get stuck down at the bottom of the hill and not be able to carry the kids back up the hill. So now they're all old enough, they can all walk themselves back up the hill and we're gonna go do this. And then when we get back, we are gonna dive into the seed chat for 2023. I'm so, so excited to do this. Um, so let's, <laughs> let's go get some laughs and giggles in, shall we? I love you. <laughs> Here she comes! Whoa! Whoa! Oh my gosh, Eli! <laughs>
Okay, go. Give me a sec. Are you gonna push me? No. <laughs> this biggest slide in Ben history. Buddy, are you okay? <laughs> <laughs> Did he live for the world to see? <laughs> what do you think about your video? Are you gonna do that ever again? <laughs> you shock people. <laughs> back home. The kids are having fun with their uh, Christmas cocoa. <laughs> Maggie's on her way to ballet and I'm going to have tea. Okay you guys, did you enjoy that or what? Oh my gosh, that was so much fun. <laughs> like I haven't laughed that hard in a long time. Um, so anyway, <laughs> I hope you enjoyed our silly adventure from today. Uh, and I hope that gave you time to grab a cup of tea. I definitely needed another cup of tea after all of that. I might be a little sore tomorrow. Actually, I might already be a little sore right now. <laughs> okay, so um, the seed catalogs have started rolling into the mailbox. They started, well, usually before Christmas. Um, I think my first one is almost always Baker Creek, which is my favorite. Um, and seeds have started coming in as different seed orders that I've made, but I wanted to talk to you guys today about ordering seeds. And I get asked a lot of questions like, what are my favorite varieties? What things do I grow? What uh, grows really well in our, in our climate? Um, what kinds of seeds should I be ordering? Uh, like just, I just get asked so many different questions. So I'm hoping that this video will help answer some of those questions. And I'm hoping that, um, that if you're new to gardening, it's going to help you narrow down your selections in like, if you've gotten the whole seed catalog, this one's kind of old, but, um, but you know, when you get a catalog and you open it up and there's like hundreds of varieties of things, um, it can be a little bit overwhelming for some, for some people it's extremely exciting for some people. <laughs> um, but if you're trying to narrow it down to like, you know, trying to grow one or two types of tomatoes out of 50 to 60 to 70 options, that, that can be really hard. So I'm going to give you some tips on how to do that. And, um, and then also, uh, the part of the video that's going to help you as, as a gardener really anywhere is, is kind of going to be that part. And then I'm going to do a video that's totally separate on my absolute favorite varieties to grow so that it just makes it easier um, to find it. It'll be a shorter video and I'll tell you my varieties and my favorites and why they are and, um, and all of that. So that'll be in a different video coming up really, really soon here, like in the next week. And then um, today though, we're just gonna go over general information on seeds and uh, how you guys can purchase the best ones. So um, some companies might still be running sales right now. If you want to jump in on the bandwagon, now is the time. We may have already missed out on some of them. I know some only go till the very first of the year, but a lot of companies will be dumping old seeds from you know previous years or whatever, but seeds don't expect fire per se. Um, their germination rate goes down from year to year and some plants are worse than others, but it doesn't mean, mean that the seed is 
bad necessarily. So there's definitely ways that you could do germination testing um, and all kinds of things. So anyway, if you want to jump on the bandwagon and get a hold of um, any of the sales that might be available still, I definitely suggest doing that. Some people um, get worried that they're gonna accidentally buy like a, a GMO seed or something like, uh, don't worry about that. You can't buy those. They're, they're not allowed to sell them on the normal market. So, um, so unless you live somewhere that is like a giant agriculture field or something and, and uh, the wind is, you know, cross pollinating or whatever and bugs and stuff like, um, you really don't have to worry about the whole GMO issue in a home garden. So, um, so that's one thing. And then the other thing too is um, if you do live next to a big agriculture zone or you know whatever um, like a big field or something that's being sprayed um, that's another consideration you may have to worry about um, the sprays carrying over again on um, wind things like that so um, other than that seeds, seeds are pretty simple uh, so let, let's try to like simplify seed chopping for you some some catalogs are really really simple like um, this seed strictly medicinal seeds this is where I get a lot of my herb seeds they have a whole bunch of selection that most people don't have and since I do herbal medicine um, I'm always after the weird things to grow uh, the more obscure plants but um so in here it's pretty much just gives you uh, a heading and the different varieties of lavender you can grow. Um, different colors, different places they come from, and a price. Usually it tells you um, how many seeds are in a packet and things like that. So you can um, figure out sim simple catalogs. There's you know only really a couple of pictures, nothing in color. So it's just really easy just to look at that. Um, but then there's other catalogs like Johnny Seeds. And um, to be honest, the reason that I chose one company to order from, uh, which was Baker Creek for so long was because their catalog was so easy. Like I, they only sell heirloom seeds, which are organic. Um, so like the organic or non-organic or hybrid or not, it's not even an issue. It's not an option from this particular company. So you only have, you're only going to get heirloom seeds no matter what you purchase from them. And um, so it was just really, really simple. Their seed prices are amazing. Honestly, this is probably one of my absolute favorite companies because, uh, well, who can't fall in love with a, a book that comes in the mail like this and they have an amazing story behind them and the seed stories that they tell are just amazing. So I'm a sucker for beautiful pictures and a good story. Um, so companies like Johnny's sell all kinds of things, um, which makes it a little bit hard when you're looking through a catalog to really um, figure out what you're trying to buy. I'm gonna see if I can find a example here. Okay, so um, like when you're looking at tomatoes, there's a couple of different things that get a little bit complicated. Um, first of all, you're looking at things like indeterminate, which um, just basically means the tomato plant grows and grows and grows forever until it gets cold. Um, or a determinant, which means that it pretty much grows to a certain height and stops growing and then just produces all of its fruit at one time. Um, so there's there's that to look at. Then there is also, um, of course, organic versus um, non-organic, or which that just means that it was grown with pesticides and herbicides or without them. Um, so you have to make that choice. And then, of course, there is a uh, hybrid versus like an heirloom. So an heirloom seed just means that, that it's a stable variety uh, that has been sort of passed down for a while. Uh, 
whereas a F1, which you're gonna see in the catalog, there's there's um like the plant name and then F1 in parentheses. And an F1 is a type of hybrid plant. So it just means you took, you know, a purple tomato and a red tomato and you you uh, pollinated the two plants together by hand and made sure that you were gonna cross those two only. And then, and then the, the baby of the one is the one they're selling the seeds for, like the cross of those. So um, it's not really a bad thing. Like all plant varieties have been crossed at one point or another. Um, but if you try to save the seeds from that baby plant, uh, it's not going to be that baby plant again when you get the seeds. You could get any number of combinations. So if you're wanting to save seeds, it's better to stay away from the hybrids. Now there are positives when it comes to hybrids and um, some of the positives are like the tomato varieties especially or the long things um, that just take forever to grow when you're in a short season like we are and you want something that's sort of disease resistant or pest resistant or um, like probably gonna get a crop those are the more like grocery store type of varieties and and they're gonna produce pretty heavy uh, yields and um, there's not gonna be as much question in whether or not you're gonna get a crop and so that could be a really great thing if you if you are after gardening to simply produce a large amount of food to get your family through the year then by all means that might be a that might be a really great option for you however if you are in it more for the long haul and you're wanting to save seeds from year to year to year and plant them knowing that you're going to get the same thing every time you plant uh, as long as you've of course followed the rules of cross-pollinating and all of that um, then an heirloom might be more the way that you want to go so those are some of the things that you're going to have to look at when you go into a seed catalog um, now there are a couple more things you want to know when you're picking out seeds so one of the things is a lot of people i hear talking about zone what zone are you in and you can find your zone out really easy just go to google and type in uh, what is my usda agricultural zone for and then type in your zip code or type in your city and your um, state and your zone will pop up. Um, another way you could always go ask a neighbor or um, contact your local extension office. They have all of that information. It's pretty easy to come up with that and I think they go from like one till ten or something like that. Um, basically one is the coldest, ten is the hottest, and you're probably somewhere in between there. We are technically, they say that we're a zone five, uh, but I don't plant for that. I plant for a zone four, just because like this year we hit negative 22 degrees Fahrenheit. That's really, really cold. And um, basically the zones, all it's gonna tell you is what your coldest and hottest temperatures are for the year. And then you fall within whatever that category is. Um, so if you're just worried about planting a regular garden with no fruit trees or anything like that, you really don't have to worry about that. Something that is much more important is learning your frost dates. So you can also find that out on Google. Again, just go there and type in first and last frost dates for, and then your town and your, uh, your city and your state. Or you can go ask your neighbors. Um, lots of, I always encourage good community building. So ask your neighbors. The reason that you want to know is because a lot of plants um, within the description of each of the plants, if you've never gardened before, it's gonna tell you whether or not that plant, like a tomato, is the tomato going to be damaged if it gets frosted or super cold or not. So um, obviously a tomato definitely will be affected by a frost. Whereas something like a lettuce or a sp spinach or something like that probably won't be. And so you want to know when your frost date is because if you have tender crops to set out like tomato plants, you don't want to plant them too soon. 
you um, you want to wait until you're sure they're not going to be frosted or you want to make sure you have row covers ready so you can protect your little babies that you have been growing probably in your house for quite some time a lot of people uh, they buy their starts or they start their starts inside and they you know they get all their seeds and they get it very excited they start their seeds super early in the house um, and then what ends up happening is they get really tall and skinny and like they're reaching for the light and then they flop over and they're just not very strong plants so you don't want to start them too soon in your house you want to wait and start them a little bit later so that they stay short and sort of um, thick and and just strong and then um, and then you want to know that frost zone or date or whatever so you can set those plants out at the right time but there are crops and seeds that you could order sooner and go ahead and get them started and then you can put those out before the first frost um, and that's really nice because you extend your harvest so something else when you're looking through a catalog is you want to look and see in the description is it frost hardy is it not frost hardy and then <clears throat> how quick are you going to get a harvest so something like there's some radish varieties that you can harvest in 18 days from the time that little seedling pops up to harvest is only 18 days that's pretty fast um and then there's things that are like um like these hubbard squash they take is it gonna tell me on the seed packet here? No, but usually squash like this takes like 120 frost-free days to grow. That's a long time. Now I've had frost-free times that were like less than 90 days. That's not very long to grow. Uh, in fact, that happens frequently that I have less than 90 days to grow. Um, so when you're looking at buying your seeds, you want to take into consideration those two frost dates, calculate the time between the, the last frost of spring to the first frost of fall, and that is how many growing days you have. And then try to pick a variety of whatever it is you're gonna grow that's going to be well under that time frame so you can get a harvest. Um, so here in the north, if you're looking to get um, things to grow. I try here on my farm to shoot for 45 to 65 days in the description um, to determine the varieties that I'm going to buy. So if there's a long season one or um, typically like you know squash or tomatoes or corn or anything like that, it, it's usually 90 days to harvest. Um, that's not going to cut it here. Like we're we're gonna get to right when we're about to harvest and then we're gonna get a frost. So unless I can cover the plant, grow it in a greenhouse, um, or do some other miracle, <laughs> then, then it's not even worth growing um, to me. I would rather grow something that I know I can harvest and I know I can get a lot of harvest out of it. And then, um, and so what I try to do also is pick the shortest growing um, growing time or variety uh, of whatever it is that I'm ordering. So like if a lettuce says, you know, it's 35 days to harvest and then there's another one that says it's 65 days to harvest, I'm going to go for the one that says 35 pretty much every single time. Um, another thing I like to look for is where did, so not all seed companies have this in their description. Like you really have to learn how to read between the lines. Like what is this description not saying? So if, if the description says something like, great market variety, bears heavily, and that's all they say. And they say nothing about uh, harvest time or it says nothing about taste or flavor, then that is probably not a very tasty variety. It is more of a shippable, something that's gonna make it from your garden to a market. Um, so a lot of things that are grown in the grocery store are, are grown specifically for shipping and they're not grown for flavor, which is why the grocery store varieties, even though they're plants, they're they're really very low in nutrition very low in flavor 
And then most of the time they pick those things way, way too soon. And so they're not at the peak ripeness. That's why having your own garden and growing food in your own backyard and then just going and picking it and washing it and putting it on your table, that's going to be the best food in the whole world because it didn't go anywhere. It, it just went straight from garden to table. Um, so when I'm looking through a catalog, I am circling things and making stars by things in pencil. So I know like, okay, these are the ones that I like, first I look at all of the, um, growing, uh, time like how long does this plant take to grow um and if it's within the one that i want so you know 45 to 65 days i'll circle it then i go back through out of all of those and i say okay which one has the qualities i'm looking for i want great flavor i want you know a good yield or i want um something that will be a little bit more cold tolerant or any of those types of things and then i put an asterisk next to it uh, or a star or something so that I know that's probably the variety that I'm going to choose. Um, when you're growing in a small home garden, you don't have, um, the ability to grow all the things. Although I do try, I mean, you see my boxes of seeds here. <laughs> um, and I, have, I do have a lot of seeds. We've been expanding, um, our gardens like an acre and a half at this point, And I don't know, pretty soon, I'm not going to be able to differentiate the garden from the animal pens because it's all just going to be growing different things at different times. <laughs> so I'm going to, I, I probably should get another seed box at this point because it's getting kind of hard to snap the lids, but, <laughs> um, I have the two seed box cause I have one box that's flowers and herbs. And then I have another one that's fruits and vegetables. And, um, and I really should probably have one for cover crops and uh, grains and things like that, uh, which I will, I'm sure I'll get to that probably this year. Um, so when I am looking through the seed catalog and I'm trying to pick things out, those are the things that I'm keeping in mind so that I don't get overwhelmed in making a giant order. Um, a couple things that I've done to cut down on cost are, like I said, order at the end of the year, get in on that um, seed sale because they're getting rid of last year's stock so they can get this year's or the next year's stock in and uh, making room. And so those seeds are fine. They're not like, they're not going to be expired. They may have a little bit less of a germination rate. Um, just use them first or plant a little bit extra uh, seeds so that you know that you're going to get those, those crops. But if you're paying 50% off a seed packet, you know, that's going to be pretty cheap. Um, another thing to keep in mind is order from a good company. Like I would really be leery of ordering from places like Amazon or, um, I don't know. There's, I'm sure there's a lot of different places out there. Make sure that you're ordering from a good seed company because I've had seeds come in the mail and then they're not labeled accurately. And so when you grow them, you may love the variety and you can never order it again because you have no idea what plant you grew or it might be something super invasive or just something that's not even a great plant anyway or you may have just wasted your money and the seeds maybe won't grow or won't grow true to variety or just all kinds of things can go wrong when you when you don't order from a reputable company so some of my favorites of course are baker creek um i love johnny seed company i love heirlooms evermore and if you're local um local to me here uh, heirlooms evermore is a, um, really fun because they have, uh, moms package the seeds here in Idaho. And so the seeds don't necessarily come from Idaho, but they're packaged here and then they're shipped out all over the place. And they have a very small list of things that they sell. So if you get very overwhelmed with something, um, that comes in the mail and looks like this, where there's hundreds of varieties of things then you can go to a smaller company like them, support a nice, um, support local family. And, um, and then you can just pick varieties. Now their company is more tailored towards cold climate things. Now you can certainly, if you're in a warm climate, you can order those seeds and they're going to probably do just fine for you. Uh, when, when you hear things like they're, they're tailored to a cold climate, it means that they're going to take less time to grow. So they're probably going to be 55 days, 45 days, whatever to maturity. Um, 
but if you don't want to be overwhelmed, then I highly recommend that company. Um, and then of course, if you're looking for different herbs, then I, this is like my favorite, Strictly Medicinal, I love them. Um, and if you're looking for more like trees and things like that, I, I've ordered from Burnt Ridge so many times. I love them. They're, they're a great nursery to order from. Um, and of course you can always go local, but I have had better luck talking with bigger nurseries that are not in the state who still know my area. Um, but I have found that the, the plants just have just done better for me. So, um, those are some of my favorite companies. There's so many out there. I mean, truly there are so many seed companies. I just pick a handful because, um, I don't know. I, I just do. I, <laughs> I just do. Um, but you know, by all means, do your research, go out there, go see what other great companies. If you have a company that I haven't named today and you love them or have had great success with growing the, their seeds in a cold climate like ours or a short season, please leave it down in the description box and I will definitely check them out. Um, and then, um, let's see, let's see. Have I covered everything? Oh, I wanted to talk to you also about how to narrow down your selection. So we've already talked about, of course, you know, the obvious things, growing the zone and all of that kind of thing. But um, when you get like, a, you know, okay, like let's just take Johnny's here. Um, and there's all of these amazing carrots. So they do oftentimes do blends. So if you're wanting to grow five or six different types of lettuce, you can usually order a lettuce blend and you're gonna get a whole bunch of varieties in there or a carrot blend or um, like there's rainbow Swiss chard. And that's a really great way to save money on ordering your seeds as well. Where So you're only buying one packet and it has a whole slew of stuff. One of my favorite blends and it has so many different types of things in it. And I we had planted one time and harvested from spring all the way till fall, which that's huge in our climate that goes from freezing cold to super hot to freezing cold. <laughs> and uh, anywhere in between, it could be rainy, it can be dry. And I mean, this last this last growing season we had, it was a perfect example of that. Um, so the dragon stir fry mix, and I hope they're offering it. I actually, I should have told you, I should have looked. Um, I didn't look, but <laughs> um, by Baker Creek, their dragon stir fry mix was phenomenal. And I definitely will be growing that again this year. Another way, of course, to save money on seeds is to save them yourself. Like dill is so easy. I showed you guys a video. I'll throw a link up in the cards for you if you're interested in checking out seed saving video. Um, but you can definitely save seeds. Another way that I haven't mentioned yet is when I first started growing, especially out here in a bigger garden, um, I wanted to grow all the things. I wanted to grow as many varieties of things as possible because I didn't know the property that I'm growing on very well. And I, I wanted to plant as many things as I could to figure out and weed out as fast as possible what things grew really well and what things didn't so I, so I could stop buying them. So instead of buying all of the seeds by myself, I went in on seed orders with friends and then we just traded or I would host seed swaps at my house package up the seeds that either didn't work at my place or um, I just had extras of or whatever and we just all traded different seeds and that meant I could try a whole bunch of different varieties at no extra cost. It meant that I got to talk with garden people because um, when you're a crazy plant lady, you got to find people to talk to whose eyes don't glaze over. So thank you for being here. Thank you for being my plant people. I love you. I love talking about plants all day long, um, but not everybody does. So, <laughs> um, so this is like totally my outlet for crazy plant lady talk. So, uh, yeah, get, get ready guys. Cause I got a lot, a lot more coming out. Um, but in then also, um, it's a way like if you don't have a lot of money to buy a bunch of seeds, you could join a plant swap and get seeds. And a lot of times you don't even have to bring your own seeds or you could bring like one packet, which is $3 or $4 and split it all up and share it with a whole bunch of people 
and then you're going to get a whole bunch. And if you don't know of any plant swaps in your area, I know the libraries in our area, they usually host one about this time of year. And if you're, if you're specifically in my area, not only can you check out the libraries, but I will be hosting one. So if you want to stay tuned to our Facebook page, which is Esther's Eden, uh, I will have that popping up sometime in February. Excuse me. Usually I do it in February. That gives everybody kind of a time to be thinking about plants and, um, and then everyone has made their orders and stuff like that. So all, and all my orders are usually in by then. So it kind of gives me a chance to have my garden plans done and all that kind of stuff. So, um, yeah. So if you want to save money, those are pretty good ways to do it. And then, um, let's see. Oh, okay. So I wanted to talk to you also about, you don't have to grow all the varieties. Okay. So I feel like when the seed catalogs come in, of course, they're full of these beautiful pictures and all these different varieties. And number one, they're not all going to do well for you. And number two, you don't have to grow all the seed varieties. If you want to grow orange carrots because you grew up eating orange carrots, by all means, that's totally fine. You don't have to have a Pinterest worthy garden or an Instagram worthy a uh, bunch of carrots, you can just grow what works for your family. That's, that is okay. And in fact, that is better than growing to please other people. So, um, tailor your seeds to, you know, what seeds are you going to buy to what seeds you're actually going to want to eat when they grow up into vegetables. Like if you don't like to eat it, don't grow a whole row of it. Just grow a little bit. Just grow like one or two plants. Try it out or start trying it every year to change your taste buds if that's something you want to do. Um, but by all means, you don't have to grow um, all the things and that's fine. It's totally okay. These companies are so good at marketing. They're good at catching your attention and catching your eye and, and specifically showing off the things that they want to sell, but that might not be great for you. So keep that in mind when you're looking through those catalogs. Remember, you're the customer. They have something to sell. They want to make money. They want you to spend their money. So I'm sorry um, if you guys uh, following along with me are going to want to buy all the things and I'll show you some of the things in another video of what I'm going to be growing and my favorite things. Um, but keep it in mind, you, you don't have to, I just love growing as many things as possible. Several years ago, um, I, I've tried out different things to see what, you know, what kind of things that I really want to sell from Esther Seedon and did I want to sell anything at all? And for a couple years, I ran, um, a little tiny CSA, which was super fun. The kids loved picking the veggies and bringing them to town to different people and delivering them and all of that. Um, and I quickly realized when you're selling for a market like that, you do have to grow all the beautiful things. That's what people love to get in their packages and love to buy from you is, you know, all of that kind of thing. And so I grew like six different colors of radishes. Um, for a crazy plant lady, that was a really bad thing to do because now I can, I have to have all of the beautiful radishes because they're so pretty. And it's like, we've had just white or dirt for so long in our cold climate that radishes, when you pull them out of the ground, they're just this burst of color. And it's one of the first colorful things that we get after such a long winter, um, that now they're like my favorite thing to grow, but I could do without all of those, um, rainbow colored carrots. We like yellow. We like orange. Those are pretty much our favorites. We like one variety of red as well. Um, and we'd rather just grow the ones that work best for us and not worry about doing the rainbow variety of everything. Uh, and that's totally fine. You, you grow what works best for you. And I work on growing what works best for me. And, um, but I will just have that out there. Like, <laughs> um, so yeah, so I'm not going to go through these gigantic boxes with you today. I feel like that's going to make such a huge video. I hope that this video has been helpful for you. I hope you enjoyed going to the sledding hill with us for a little bit. 
If you have liked the content and it's been helpful to you in some way, please give our video a thumbs up. That helps, um, that helps our channel and it helps the video spread to more people so they can get this information as well. It is definitely catalog, seed catalog time. It is definitely seed ordering time. And um, I would like to be able to help as many gardeners grow their best garden ever this year. So um, I would be very grateful if you would share this video with people. Also, if you hit the share button, you can send it in a text or a uh, message or whatever like um, to other people, other friends, other growers, if you have found this information helpful. So that would be awesome. And um, if you have garden questions, please leave them down in the comments uh, for me and I will try to, to make sure that I'm covering those in the future videos that are coming up. So um, my plan is to uh, answer as many questions in videos as possible because I have so many people texting me and asking me, oh my gosh, what are you planting right now? What's your favorite variety? Is it? I love those text messages, but answering, you know, 30 text messages every day makes my kids like a little bit crazy. <laughs> And so this is a much better way. I can tell everybody all at once and I can give you way more information this way. So that's one of the reasons I started a YouTube channel. Um, so I hope you guys continue to learn and grow and I'll see you in the next video. Thanks for joining me today.